These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Type of functional group is this. Of a primary amine. It's an amine, right? And to be more specific, it's a primary amine. Good. Well, before we get into that. What's this? We've seen that these hydrogens could be carbon chains. What's this? Imine. 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 And these hydrogens could be carbon chains. We know that we can make. How, how do we? Well, let me get back to that. All right. So. Uh, About this functional group? Enamine. Is that how your instructor pronounces it? Enamine? I always say enamine, enamine. but pardon? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it seems logical to call it an enamine. Why is this called an enamine? Because it's the ene double bond and amine. Right. What does the ene stand for? Alkene. So alkene and amine. These are all things we've discussed quite a bit in the past, but I just wanted to go through them one more time because people tend to get confused about these ideas. Now, here's one we haven't talked about in the past. Uh, but this is going to come up today. Have you guys seen the Gabrielle synthesis? Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to be using a compound like this in the Gabrielle synthesis. Uh, I don't know if you happen to know what the name of this is, this general type of functional group. This one we haven't talked about. Outside. Azide is, N, uh, is N3. Uh, maybe we should talk about that too. But azide is N3. This is an imide. Does that ring any bells? Yes. In the Gabrielle synthesis, I think we use something called uh, thalamide. Okay. So, uh, how would we pronounce it? Thalamide. So, uh, imides are oftentimes cyclic. But anyway, the key thing is carbonyl, nitrogen, carbonyl. This looks a lot like a anhydride. Right? But in an anhydride, there would be an oxygen here, and here there's a nitrogen. So carbonyl, nitrogen, carbonyl. Just like this looks a lot, well, uh, good enough. So anyway, it's very easy to confuse all these names. We've got amine and imine. We've got amide and imide. So it's important to have all these in one place in your notes. And then azides, I believe, are something like this. That's worth knowing, too. Okay, so an azide is three nitrogens all connected to each other. And again, that's a similar name, but different from some of these other ones. So lots of names that are easy to get confused with each other. This chapter is about amines, but we don't want to confuse it with these other ideas. What's the name of this molecule? Ammonia. What type of functional group is this? Right? 
And this what would be a good name for this? Ammonium. Ammonium. This is a protonated amine. Now we could also call this an ammonium ion, but we could call it a primary ammonium to indicate that the nitrogen is attached to one carbon chain. It's not a primary amine, but a primary ammonium. Notice how many things is a, a neutral nitrogen, how many bonds should a neutral nitrogen have? Three. three. A neutral nitrogen has three bonds. That helps you to figure out how many hydrogens you should put on. A mistake I make a lot on the blackboard is putting the wrong number of hydrogens in. Um, but here we know we need one hydrogen because there's two carbon chains. And here are no hydrogens because there's already three bonds. But when do you get something positive? When you have four bonds. So here we have four bonds in total. So this would be a secondary ammonium, etc. There could be a tertiary or a quaternary ammonium, depending on how many carbon chains you're attached to. Anyone know what the name of this is? You might as well go over the nomenclature here. That shouldn't take too long. What's the name of this compound? Any suggestions? N propyl. Let's talk about that. Now we need to know, uh, now we know this is an amine, and we need to know what the suffix is for amines. Well, it turns out that the suffix for amines is extremely easy to remember. The suffix for amines is amine. So how many carbons do we have here? Three carbons, which means prop. Now there's no double bonds, so it's propan. And then we put it in the suffix, amine. The suffix for amines is just amine. Oh. And, and is when you have a cyclic? We'll be actually talking about that pretty shortly, so we'll get to that. N is when there's additional carbon chains on this nitrogen. N is when there's additional carbon chains on the nitrogen. Since, um, so you don't need that nomenclature for primary amines, so we'll, have to, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, we do need a locator here, because theoretically, the nitrogen could be on any of these three carbons. Well, this would be one propanamine. Just like the suffix for alcohols is OL, and the suffix for aldehydes is AL, the suffix for amines is particularly easy to remember, it's just amine. So let's give a name to this compound. You just say this out loud. Uh, two, two, propanamine. No, two butanamine. Oh, I have the true bond structure. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Try naming this compound. Now, who would we call the parent here? We want to pick the longer carbon chain as the parent. So the parent here would be one, two, three, four. Butte. No double bonds, so it's butan. And the suffix is amine. Amine. We have N, one, two, amine. Right. Now, the 
before we get to that, the main chain here should be one butanamine because the nitrogen is attached to the number one carbon here. Okay, and then you were going on ahead. Uh, you've already figured out we're going to name this carbon chain as a substituent. We're going to name this carbon chain as a substituent, and I think you came up with the right name, which is ethyl. Ethyl. But if we're going to call this a substituent, we need to give a locator to it. We need to say where it is. Well, there's a clever kind of locator here. Instead of using a number, we're going to use a letter to indicate that this substituent is on the nitrogen, since so it would be N-ethyl-1-butanamine. 